What's up, Saints? Um, I'm doing this video for people out there. If you're messing around with um, anything with the occult or looking for ghosts or anything like that, you know, uh, before the Lord saved me, um, I basically came up in life, you know, my whole family was involved with uh, going to psychics and, you know, palm reading and tea leave reading and, you know, just everything was uh, very... Um, enveloped in the occult I guess you know it was scary like looking back on it like uh, nothing nothing shocked us you know we were so in touch with the other side but in a bad way you know uh, it would be nothing to you know have a door open or shut or you know just unexplainable things happen or you even hear something um, and nobody's there you know you were just always in touch with this other side, and we didn't know, I didn't know as a kid that this is bad, you know, so, growing up, I chased that, I looked into it, I was on the Ouija board, and, you know, all these things, and then I started to see that you could summon spirits from it, and that, what I didn't know then was that if a spirit is in heaven, if a spirit is in glory with God, it is not coming down here to speak with us, you know, that if, Anything you contact through a Ouija board is not a good spirit. Now, people will look at a Ouija board and say, I can't believe that's true. I don't believe there's ghosts. I don't believe there's spirits and, and all this. And that's how they try it out. But when they do that, when you do that, you're opening up a door, basically, to that spirit to come in. You're inviting that spirit to come in. So you can go to someone's house and play with a Ouija board at night, you know, as a kid, have a sleepover, think it's a joke, you know, some candles, things like that, and go home. But this spirit can follow you home, and you don't understand that. And that happens all the time. And you even have, you know, the Ouija board's a game, you know. You can buy it at any uh, store, basically, for kids to go play like it's a game. But it, it's far from a game. And the people to put that out understand that. You know, that's part of the Antichrist movement, you know. These spirits will come at these kids and they'll, they'll act like they, they're their guardian angels. They'll tell them a couple of things. They may show them where something's at that's been missing or things like that. But the truth is, if, the, if you are in heaven, the last thing you're thinking about is coming back here to speak with one of us. You're in glory. You are in glory. And when I was out of my body one time... Um, I believe, yeah, when I overdosed, because I, I, I was a drug addict and every other thing, and, you know, I was, uh, I was on methamphetamines, and I, you know, I was up for five and a half days straight, never sleeping, and, uh, you know, anyway, I went into, uh, you know, rapid heart rate and collapsing and everything like that, and, uh, I made it to my front yard, and, you know, like had a collapse on the ground and the ambulance came and all that. And uh, in the ambulance, I was out of my body three different times. I would be on the ceiling looking down at myself and thinking, oh, my Lord, you know, what do I do? Uh, it's weird to see your body, but then you're like, what's going on, you know? I can't believe I'm out of my body. Well, this is ridiculous. This is insane. What did I do with my life, you know? And uh, when I was out of my body, though, it was so much peace. You know, uh, now at that time I didn't see any light though. I, I was just in pitch darkness, but it was peace. But I had a feeling like something's there. I can't see it. I just didn't feel good. I, I felt nice with the peace, but I didn't think that peace was staying long. I thought that I was going to have some kind of uh, repercussion coming or something. I thought something's coming. It's, it's going to make me pay for what I've done. I haven't got away scot free, you know, with the way I live my life and. I was instantly aware that, you know, even if I was to, even if my kids were to live to be 100 years old, I would see them like this. I can describe the other side like this to you. You see how you got up this morning, uh, say you, you know, uh, for the husband, say your wife left at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, well, when you see her, when she comes home, God willing, at, you know, say 4 o'clock in the afternoon, that's like what it was. You know, I knew that if I could just stay here, even if they lived to be 100, they'd be here like that. You know, on earth we're time bound, and there they're not. So, somebody that passed away, and we live another 50 years, and we get to heaven, it's been a long time for us, but to them they just left us. There is no time, you know. It's not like here. So, 
That's why I say those spirits are not even thinking about coming back here. You know, I loved my family. I'll die for them in a second, but I didn't want to come back. But I knew that I hadn't lived a good life. I was a drug addict. I, I didn't lead a good life. I needed the, the Lord allow me to come back to change things. So that's the reason I came back. I asked to come back. Please let me lead them right, you know. And obviously I still had some more things to go through there. But that's why these spirits aren't contacting us. The spirits that you can contact and call upon are not good spirits. Because if they were good spirits, they'd be at eternal happiness in heaven. They're not worried about us because we will be there like that anyway. They don't think to come back to us. But the devil will put these demons out there to de deceive us. And to, you know, I've been in that world and I've been in that... Um, on that psychic side of things and you know I used to tap into that stuff and astral travel and you know I was really into that side because that's how we were raised you know my mother always used to go to psychics and you know it was always like that so it wasn't nothing new to us that's why when I was trying to find Jesus I didn't know how I was like I don't know what to do you know I'd go to a church and then I'd come out and I'm looking at like uh, Calling into a psychic or going to a psychic or going to a seance. Like, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I didn't know how to get to them. The Bible was never read in our house, you know what I mean? And even though they were into that, my family, I still went to church on Sunday, but there was no, it was very, very scary walk, I'll tell you that. To go to work on Sunday and believe in all this other stuff and not reading the Bible and, you know, not really praying. I, I had no idea how to get to Jesus. And I was so obsessed with dealing with the other side you know I'd catch an EVP and I'd hear you know I'd speak into it I'd ask questions and then I'd hear a spirit talk back and I'd let everybody listen you know and uh, you know adults things like that my you know family members let them listen to what I heard and it's like wow you know I was obsessed I can't believe I got to talk to a spirit or uh, things like that I used to sleep in the pitch dark you know what I mean? When I used to get up and walk through the house, I used to feel these things all around me because I was calling them in, inviting them in all the time through my things I was doing, the way I was living my life. And I was opening all, up all kinds of doors, you know, and blowing through light bulbs and everything. The energy in my house was off the chain. And it was a power. I felt like power, you know, because the devil will give you power. Even though I wasn't specifically calling on Satan, I was calling on things of Satan. So he's a tree and they're the branches, these things, you know what I mean? And I'm calling on these branches. He's the source. And I didn't understand that. And I'm just saying, for you kids out there, you're looking, even adults, you know, if you're interested and you're, you know, you think it's amazing to tap into the other side. Well, it's pretty much, it's a no-brainer. You know, you can tap into the other side. You can talk to a spirit. I've been touched by a spirit from the other side. Touched on the back of my neck with a hand, cold as ice physically touched so anything can happen here and I've seen spirits I mean I've seen spirits so many times in my life I didn't even flinch as I would get older I wouldn't even you know I was never you know just stop and panic and run you know because I had seen them from the time I was a kid you know and this is how my life was so there's other people out there who are raised in that kind of environment you don't know how to get to Jesus you have to understand something the Bible speaks against all these things divination and you know soothsayers and all of that we are not supposed to try and look into any kind of future event nothing like that we're not we're supposed to have faith in God you know we're supposed to put our faith in God and in, in, in the mercy of Jesus you know we're not supposed to worry about these things we do not need to chase the other side what do we want to have any kind of relationship with a spirit or a ghost for anyway? You know, I know that many people are so scientific in their head, they just can't grasp it. You know, they don't believe something unless they can touch it. Well, that's just not the world we live in. You know, the ultimate thing is we're the creation and the creator knows all. We're never going to know everything or be able to touch everything. That's such a scary way to be. Don't believe it unless you can touch it. So... But, like I say, faith is a gift, so I would call on you kids and, or whoever, adults, anybody. You know, you come out of the occult, you're not sure what's going on. Please, leave these spirits alone. Leave them be. You know, because there are spiritual warfare all the time. Astral travel was something, you know, I learned how to do and could do it nonstop, you know. And even today in dreams, I'm always aware, you know. 
I'm aware if I'm being attacked. I'm aware if I'm in spiritual warfare. You know? And I'll start screaming scripture and these demons start running. And there's this one dream uh, I just had not long ago. And I was in a setting where there was a bunch of people around and there was some music. And it was a worldly environment, you know? And uh, there was people drinking and things like that. And it was uh, like I used to be, you know, in my before I was saved, you know, and uh, there was some things going on that, you know, it, it wasn't of God, you know, and I was falling, you know, I'd love to say I never fall, I'm always real strong, but, and usually I am, but this dream, I just, for some reason, I wasn't strong, and uh, I started to fall a little bit, you know, I think with the temptation or with that, whatever, and uh, I heard, I heard something whisper in my ear. This is spiritual warfare. You're under attack. And I looked around at everybody, and it, it was music playing, and there's people there. And I looked around at everybody, and there was uh, a female talking to me, and uh, you know, being seductive and all these things. And uh, and I said, I, I I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. And she gave me a look and the guy next to me was talking with a girl and he gave me a little look but they kept right back to she went on with what she was talking about and he tried to ignore it real quick and I said it again and they looked again a little uneasy then went back to doing what they were doing and she was trying to throw me off and then I sat up and said it louder and then they all just everybody I mean I'm talking there's 20 people in this room they all start to look like what's going on here and then I stood up and I put my hand in the air and said, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May the blood of Jesus Christ come on you and envelop you and inebriate you. And these people started running like you would imagine if I had a gun just spraying. They started running. So they were, you know, from the devil, these people. But they looked normal. You know, they looked like any commercial you see where everybody's out drinking at the bar. Like, they looked perfectly normal. But when I brought the blood of Jesus, when I rebuked Satan in the name of Jesus Christ, they ran. And I ran through this place. And it was a dark place, you know. And some went off into an auditorium and, like, ran for exits. And I was screaming and screaming and screaming out of all of them. And then there was this uh, corridor. It was, like, three foot wide. It wasn't real wide. And there was doorways off all the way down it. Now, regular human thinking, we would say, ah, you know, it was pitch black down there, so really you don't want nothing to do with it. And I took a look at it and I thought, well, this is pitch black. This is freaky, you know. And I could see just shadows running back, people running from place to place. And I put my hand up and ran down there pleading the blood of Jesus Christ, rebuking Satan, and everybody in that whole establishment was running for their life. And that is where I'm at, you know what I mean? Like, I went to fall, but the Holy Spirit whispered this, you're under attack. And then I looked around, beautiful, okay, hallelujah. And, and many other times I'll be attacked by demons, and boom, I'll go off and I'll start spitting out scripture, and they're running. And... Another time, uh, there was these buses pulled up, and they were letting kids off at this school, and I, I started to, you know, it looked like a normal setting, but I looked around and seen, I just felt evil. So I said, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Same thing, people start to look. Anyway, I ended up putting my hands up, I rebuke you, Satan. Everybody's running. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everybody's running. So we are attacked in our dreams, you know. We're attacked in our dreams. We're attacked every day. Stay away from the spiritual stuff, guys, and don't look into trying to get into it. Don't don't chase it because it's not good. There are ghosts and spirits, and if you wanted to talk to them, you can. And if you want to call on the devil to give you power, he'll give it to you. But there is no power like the true power. The devil is an imitator. He always wants to imitate God, but his, his things are never as good as God's because he's creation also, just like us, except at a very high level, right? Absolutely the highest of levels. But he's still creation. He can only try and act like he's giving you something. But God's the only one who's the originator. He's the one where the power's at. So out of all the power the devil's ever tried to give me or I've ever drawn off of these evil things not knowing witchcraft or magic or any of that stuff, 
it's all it's all nothing it's loose it's nothing it has no merit if you're looking into it please stop repent ask Jesus into your heart because with Jesus the power you'll get will be unbelievable because the Holy Spirit like I'm saying when I was about to fall I had my moments of weakness we all do but in that moment you're under spiritual attack boom you're under spiritual warfare I want God up Boom, I chase. Now, I'm not doing nothing. That's the Holy Spirit driving these people out of here, not me. If demons are running in a dream, that's not from me. That's from the Spirit. That's all. We need to chase Jesus and ask Him to use us. Please allow us to be a vessel. But please, if you are worrying about this stuff, guys, get out of it. Don't worry about it. A soul that is in heaven is at rest. They're not coming down to bother us. They don't care. Because we're going to be there like that. They're in glory. I don't cry when people die. Hallelujah. They're home. We're still stuck here. School of hard knocks. You know what I'm saying? Leave the divination, the occult alone. Leave these Ouija boards and contacting spirits and EVPs and all that crap alone. Leave it. Pray the blood of Jesus Christ over you each night. Pray that your soul be kept in your body and sealed there with the blood of Jesus each and every night as you sleep. Please protect yourself because... This world makes these things interesting. Every channel, every show, ghost hunters, ghost this, ghost that. Guys, don't do it. Because you're opening doors up and they are hard to close. The Holy Spirit can close them, but they're still hard to close. And if you don't understand spiritual warfare, you're in trouble. You are in trouble. I understood spiritual warfare and had a tough time closing them. So, please, I would implore you. Seek Jesus and leave this other stuff alone. Because if any spirit will contact you, it is not a spirit at rest. It is a deceiving spirit. And I had somebody one time come to me with a Ouija board and say, Well, I asked that spirit if Jesus was real and, and it said yes. Of course he said yes. Did he want to? No. But under spiritual law, he cannot deny that. He cannot deny that because truth is truth. He can't deny that. He didn't want to tell her that. But... He had to. He was obligated to because there is only one truth, and that's Jesus. Leave this empty stuff alone, guys. Don't fall for what the world's selling you here. Chase Jesus and let the rest go. Don't worry about this. These spirits are not at rest. These spirits are not of God. Repent and chase Jesus. Ask him into your heart, and he'll do the rest. But be true. All right, God bless you guys. Peace.